Hello and welcome to Big Friendly Grub. It's a lovely day outside today, so I have picked today to spend it indoors filming another video for you guys. These are the sacrifices that I make. Little secret, don't actually like going outside that much. There are people out there. But yes, we are back with another Big Friendly Grub right off the back of our Biscuit Trilogy. If you've watched that, thank you. If you haven't watched it, why not go give it a go? There's loads of biscuity goodness on there. But today is almost like a little bit of continuation, not because we're making biscuits, but because in the last recipe, when we made our biscotti, we had taken a trip over to Italy, not a literal trip, yeah, a metaphorical trip. That's where we took our food culturally. Sadly, I can't afford to go to Italy at the moment. I wish I could. That would make for some great videos. But yes, we were making food from Italy and I thought I would stay on that track today. So today you have focaccia coming at you. <coughs> <coughs> Incredibly sorry about that. Don't know what came over me. But yes, today we are going to be making focaccia, that wonderful Italian bread. It is so good, so, so good. The reason it's so good, it's got loads and loads of olive oil in it, which makes it incredibly naughty, but it is so good. It's fantastic to have by itself or dipped in more olive oil with balsamic vinegar. You can use it to create a nice sandwich with. I don't know why I went so high. Or you could use it to make a really nice sandwich, put in like mozzarella cheese and some nice Italian meats. Or you could simply have it as an accompaniment with pasta. It's got many, many, many versatile uses. And that's why I'm gonna show you how to make it today. Today, I'm gonna to actually be showing you how to make a olive, rosemary and garlic one. I actually made this the other day because it was my friend Ellie's last day working with us at Rocket Mill, which is very sad. But if you're watching Ellie, best of luck, we'll miss you. And because you wanted to see this on video form, this is why I'm recording this. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to actually record it the other day because it was quite late at night already. But enough of me talking, come and follow me and we'll make some focaccia. So what we're gonna to need to make our focaccia is actually some very simple ingredients. To start off with, we need 500 grams of strong white bread flour. I've already pre-weighed this for speed and efficiency. Some salt. We're gonna need about seven grams of the Easy Bake yeast. You can get this in sachet forms where it will be actual, like actually seven grams already pre-weighed for you. So you can get those instead. You'll need some olive oil. I've gone for extra virgin olive oil here. I would encourage you to use that just because it's a little bit nicer than the regular stuff. If you can only get the regular stuff, that's absolutely fine, that will work. But I prefer to use the extra virgin olive oil. You're not only gonna need this to go into the bread, you're gonna need it to go onto the bread, to knead the bread. It's multi-purpose in this video, as you will see. Then you will need 360 milliliters of tepid water lukewarm water, whatever you want to call it. It's just a bit warm. And that's actually it for the actual bread dough. But we're actually going to need stuff to go onto the focaccia to flavor our focaccia with. So what I have today is some olives. I've got both black and green pitted olives. If you don't like olives, don't use olives. Also got some fresh rosemary, which I've cut off the little plant that I keep on my windowsill. I love rosemary. It's my favorite herb. It just smells amazing. We're also going to need some garlic. I've got two rather large bulbs here. If you don't have bulbs as large as this, look, it's quite large. Look, 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 look. <clears throat> yes, if you don't have bulbs quite this large, then you can do like three smaller ones, four smaller ones, however much garlic you would like on it. Again, if you don't want garlic on it, don't put garlic on it. But seriously, if you don't like what I'm putting onto the focaccia today, another really nice one is oregano and sea salt. You get some dried oregano, the sea salt I showed you earlier, and just sprinkle that across the top instead of the olives and all of that stuff. It's also really, really good and really, really, really Moorish. But in addition to our ingredients, you'll also need a decent sized roasting tin. This is the one I I'm using. So it's got a little bit of depth to it. It's quite large as well. So you need something like that. You can go for a square one as well. You could even go for a round one if you wanted to. It's entirely up to you. Shape doesn't matter too much. I prefer this one. You'll also need a good two to three litre size plastic tub. This is what we're gonna prove the bread in the first time around because the catcher generally has a squarish shape. This allows us to have that shape and also we don't wanna to knock too much air out of it after the first proof. And this allows us to gently tip it out after proving. 
So you'll need something like this as well. And that's it. So follow me and we can get started. That was very threatening. Come make this for catcher or else, grr. You don't have to, this is all purely voluntary. I'm just grateful for you being here. We're back once again in our familiar position with our bowl and our scales. I'm going to be, as always, showing you how to do this by hand, but we could also do it in a stand mixer like I have right over there. And we're just going to start off with our 500 grams of flour, which I have pre-weighed. 498. I'm sure there was 500 there earlier, but that's close enough. Then over this side of the bowl, I'm going to weigh out our about 7 grams of yeast. There we go, seven grams. And over this side, we're gonna have about 10 grams of sea salt. If you've watched the bread video that I did, you might remember me saying about how to keep the yeast and the salt on opposite sides of the bowl when you're weighing them out. Because if the salt comes into direct contact with the yeast, you'll kill the yeast and you won't get a good rise on your bread. Once you actually mix it all in, it's fine, but putting this directly onto your yeast will kill it. So always make sure to keep them on separate sides of the bowl. Then you're gonna need 60 milliliters of your extra virgin olive oil. Yes! Bang on! Now I'm going to gradually add in our water. Like most bread recipes, you may not need all of it, you might need slightly more. It all depends on your flour, the conditions in the air, other factors because baking is a science. So I'm going to add this in gradually and mix it in using my um, dough scraper because this helps me combine the ingredients better and as I've said before they're well cheap you can probably pick one up for about a quid really really handy so let's get this added in I'm going to add in about half to start with that's about right and start to combine all this together for catcher because of the oil it's a fairly sticky dough oh, I can already smell the olive oil it smells really really good Start getting this all together, get around the sides of the bowl, making sure you get everything. Of course, this will be much easier if you are using a stand mixer. But like everything at the moment, we're doing it the old fashioned way. Perhaps once uh, we've got through a few more videos and you've got a bit more confident by doing things with your hands and I get a bit more confident shooting videos, then perhaps we can then switch to the stand mixer. But at the moment, this works well. Plus it's messy and fun. I see that's already start to come together quite well. So I'm actually gonna put my dough scraper to one side. Once I've just got some of this from here. And try and get into all of this. See it's quite sticky, which is good. Looks a bit messy at the moment, but it will come together. I'm gonna move this to one side for a second. And as I said earlier, we're actually going to use our olive oil for kneading as well, instead of flour, because you don't want to add flour to this for the kneading, because like I said, it's all about the oil in this one. So I'm going to pop down a bit of olive oil. That's probably about right. I'm going to keep that to the side because I might need it again. I'm going to spread it out. It's a super messy one, this. You're going to get greasy, but don't worry about getting like horrible and greasy because as I've said before, baking's messy. It's fun because it's messy. If you are worried about getting messy, then you know, that's half the fun of baking. So I encourage you to embrace your messy side. But this is where also stand mixes can come in handy if you want to get into baking, but don't want to get messy. But I say you're missing out. So I'm going to start bringing this together in the oil. I'm going to see it's going to start to get smoother. I'm going to knead it much like we did it back in our traditional loaf uh, recipe, where we push and turn and push and turn, and it's gonna be very, very messy. I'm going to get my dough scraper, uh, just so I can keep it all together. And we're probably gonna need to do this for a good five to 10 minutes, depending on your kneading technique. Probably 10 minutes. Keep on doing this for a good, 10 minutes. You may see at points I'll probably add in more oil because obviously this is going to absorb what we've got in there. It's a very sticky dough so don't worry if it is sticking to your surface. That's where you get your dough scraper underneath it, bring it all together. You're going to have to keep doing that for this whole process. I'm going to chuck some more of this down here and get in further. 
because the dough takes in this extra oil and absorbs it into the bread dough and it becomes even richer and oilier than before and it's super naughty and super delicious. So I'm gonna keep doing this for a good five, 10 minutes. So talk amongst yourselves and we'll be back shortly. You can see the dough's actually coming together a bit more. Now it's not sticking to the surface so much, which is good. It is sticking a bit, but it's not as much as before. Ooh, make a farty noise there. The bread, not me. Not that relaxed around you guys yet. So I've probably been kneading this for a good eight minutes or so, maybe coming up to 10. And you can see it's a lot smoother. You know, all the dough's come off my hands while I've been kneading it. It's a lot stretchier, lots, lots stretchier. Feels great, it's lovely and soft. So I think that is probably about there. So what we're going to need to do now with this is to prove it. This is the trouble with being a baker. You've always got something to prove. Ooh. I'm sorry, I apologize for that pun. Actually, I don't apologize for that pun. That one's pretty good. So for the proving, this is where our tub is gonna come in very, very handy. So pop off the lid. And then what you're gonna to need to do is grease this very, very well, very, very, very well with your olive oil. Get some of your kitchen towel and spread it all around. So that's all greased. So we're gonna pop our dough into there. You're gonna spread it out. Because again, we kind of want this shape because we're gonna kind of want to tip it out in this shape. There we go, that's in there. That's pretty much into all the corners. Then we're gonna pop our lid on, make sure it's on firm and tight. Then we're gonna put this into a warm area out of direct sunlight. I'm probably gonna go pop this into my cupboard for about an hour, an hour until this dough has doubled in size. So I'm gonna go pop this in the cupboard, then do a bit of tidying up, and then we can come back in an hour or so. I'll see you then. Whew. Right, I have tidied up the best as I can. Got an hour to kill now. What shall I do? I know, it's a lovely day outside. I could go for a drive. Woo! Woo! Ah! Oh, f Ah, f off, Peach. Yes! No! Easy, easy, easy. Ah, f it. Yes! F all of you, especially you, Toad. Smug little So we're back and our focaccia dough has had a good hour or so to prove and you can probably see it has doubled in size quite nicely. You might even be able to see there's a lot of nice like air bubbles and things like that. So I think this is now ready to be put into a tin. So I'm gonna grab my tin I showed you earlier and I will also need to grab the extra virgin olive oil again because we are gonna be doing some more greasing. Just rub all that oil around the tin. So that's nice and well oiled. So we are now gonna take our dough, pop it out of here. And I'm gonna ever so gently just pull it away because I don't wanna knock too much of the air out. So just pull it away from the sides and then I'm just gonna ever so gently just tip it into here. It's going to stick a bit. We will end up knocking some of the air out because we are now going to shape this to the edges, but it's not like when you're making a normal loaf of bread and you start punching the air out of it. I'm going to try and just ease this out to the sides. So there you go, that's looking quite good. It's all into all the edges of the tin. And now it's time to leave it to prove again. That was a very quick step. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a clean kitchen towel and I'm just going to gently cover it over like this. And then I'm going to leave it again for about another 45 minutes to an hour for that to prove and rise up to the top of the tin. And then we can come back and we can pop on our olives, rosemary and garlic and get it in the oven. So I'll see you then.
Hello, and we are back, and you can see here that our focaccia dough has risen up nicely in the tin. It's almost up to the top, but not quite, which is good because it's going to raise some more in the oven when we bake it. But before we put on our toppings, flavorings, whatever you want to call them, we need to prepare them. So move this out the way. And you can see I've already done a little bit of prep work already. I've already sliced up our garlic thinish finish as thin as I possibly can get it without slicing my fingers off. You might be able to do this a bit better than me, or you might want to crush it, or you, whatever you want really. You could dice it. It's entirely up to you, if indeed you're using garlic. What we'll also need to do is prepare our rosemary. You can see I've taken most of these off the stems already, but just to show you what to do with these is all you need to do is kind of just pull them off, or you can go this way and just run your fingers push them all off like that. However you want to do it, just make sure you get those leaves off the stem because the stems are woody and they don't taste very nice. And then I've got my big old knife here. We're just gonna rock and chop these up finely. And while you're chopping it, revel in the smell of it because it smells so, so good. Don't want to go too fine though. You want some nice bigger bits as well, I think. So that's our garlic and rosemary all prepared, as you can see. Whoop, runaway garlic, get back here. Move that to one side and bring back our focaccia coming at you. And then what we're going to need to do, because um, if you've seen focaccia before, you know it has like holes or indentations in it. And the best way to do that is get a little bit of um, olive oil in the bowl just for you to dip your finger in. And then, this is a bit of a weird sensation, but then just poke your finger into the hole or poke your finger into the dough to create a hole. Just like this, and we're gonna do this as many times as we can do, really. So at this point, I mean, if you wanted plain focaccia, you certainly could do that. You could then just drizzle over the, your olive oil and then bang it in the oven. But we're not doing that today. We are doing, as I said, olive and garlic and rosemary. So with these holes, we are now going to get some olives I've got the green and black pitted olives. I've already drained them out of the, their brine, water, oil, whatever it is. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pop these into the holes that we have made because they fit in nicely. And I'm going to alternate them in color because that's how I roll. There we go, that's all our olives in. So I can move those to one side. I'll probably eat those with my lunch. Then we just wanna sprinkle over our rosemary all over get it all over there and same with our garlic as well so, scatter them over doesn't have to be any rhyme or reason to it maybe not right in the edge there make sure they're fairly even distributed but you don't need to be too strict about it brush off the rest of the rosemary and now we're going to drizzle some of our olive oil all over the top because as i said before full of oil this one that is why it's so naughty and so delicious so i'm going to pop my finger in the top here and then I'm just going to do this all across backwards and forwards a bit more in the middle oh there we go that's plenty now if you wanted to you could also pop some sea salt on top I find that with the olives and the salt that's already in it it's absolutely fine again if you don't want to do the olives the garlic the rosemary it works very very nicely with dried oregano and sea salt so you can do that if you want to it's up to you you can experiment try whatever you like but now I'm gonna pop this into the oven for about 200 degrees. That's about 375 degrees Fahrenheit, about gas mark six. Again, all the ingredients, all the temperatures and such like will be in the YouTube description and a link to the recipe on my website. So into the oven with this and we'll see you in about 25 to 30 minutes. See you then. Right, so I'm just reaching into the oven, Woo, hot and bringing out our focaccia and oh hello look at that look at that lovely and golden brown just switch the oven off really lovely golden brown it smells fantastic in the flat at the moment and that's looking really really good it's probably had about a good 20 to 25 minutes any more than that it'll probably start to uh, brown too much and the garlic would start to burn and get bitter so we wouldn't have wanted that that's probably just about right if you wanted to you could always chunk the garlic on halfway through if you're worried about burning it but as it is this is looking pretty good we're now going to leave this to cool but before i do 
I am just going to get some more olive oil, yep, more oil, and gently, 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 just drizzle some over the top while it is cooling down. Not, not masses, not like before, because as it cools down, that will drizzle in to the bread and it will just add some more extra flavour and it will be amazing. So there we go, that's just going to cool down in the tin for a bit and just let that oil absorb. And I am going to go wash my hands and we'll come back in a little bit once it's cooled down in the tin and it's had a chance to cool down and we'll check it out properly. We'll see you then. Oh, there we go. Look at that, baby. It has had time to cool down and our focaccia is now ready. It looks great. The flat smells amazing. And that's not just because of me. Yes, this is looking really, really good. Like I said, it smells amazing. It's looking really good. As I keep saying, it's looking really good. It's lovely, it's golden brown. It's risen up just about the right amount. There's not much else left to do. You know, usually I would take this to work. As you know, I take most of my stuff to work. But I took two of these the other day. I took this one and an oregano and sea salt. And I didn't get to try any at all. So you know what? Sorry guys, but I'm keeping this one. I've got a couple of ideas in mind for dinners over the next couple of days, which involve pasta. So I think this will go nicely with it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop this over here cut into it and we can have a look right now. So I've got my focaccia on a board just so I don't chop my nice board here and I am just gonna cut across here. Oh, you can hear it's got a nice sounding crust on the edge. I'll cut this across and take this away and look, I don't know if you can see because of the light, I'm gonna bring it forward a bit, but it's got a really nice bake on it. It's looking really good. You might be able to see it's got a really nice crumb. It's soft, it's springy. It smells really good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this piece into a sensible portion and then we're gonna give it a go. I'm gonna go for one of the black olives. Right, we've got the camera back on me. Sorry, let's give this a quick go. Mmm, oh, oh. oh, that is so good. I love focaccia, it's one of my favorite breads. It's one of my favorite breads to make. It's, I know it's full of oil. It's extremely naughty because of it, but God, it's so good. Mmm, sorry guys, I need a moment. Seriously, that is so good, it tastes fantastic. It'll be absolutely brilliant with just dipped in some more olive oil. You might be thinking, Surely you don't need more olive oil, but seriously, dip that in some more olive oil with some balsamic vinegar, which I actually think I have in the cupboard. So once I switch off the camera, you know what I'm gonna be doing. <laughs> but seriously, it tastes amazing. I urge you to give it a go. It is one of the best breads you can make, and it's really not that complicated. It just requires, as always with bread, a little bit of time, a little bit of love, but it's absolutely worth it. So honestly, I implore you, give it a go. If you give it a go, mention it to me down in the comments or hit me up on Twitter, on Instagram. Let me know, let me know if you give it a try because that's why I'm doing this because as much as I enjoy making really nice bread and eating it in front of you guys, what I want you to do is go, I can do that. I want to give that a go. So let me know if you do it. But if you do it, most of all, have fun. If it doesn't go quite right the first time, give it another go. You're probably gonna get something that's gonna taste really good the first time, even if it doesn't turn out looking quite right. And just practice makes perfect with this stuff. It really does. And even if it's not perfect, it still tastes brilliant. So that's it from me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, give it a go. It's like one of the best birds you can make at home. And I'm now gonna go, and I'm gonna go enjoy this with some balsamic vinegar and olive oil, baby. Take care. I'll see you next time on Big Friendly Grub. Bye. Ah.